What we've got here are the two pleural membranes. Well, actually two acetates, but this is the parietal pleural membrane on the outside, which moves with the chest wall. And this is the visceral pleural membrane attached to the surface of the lung. And between the two, there's a layer of serous fluid, which I'm going to duplicate with this water. Now, you can probably see there that when we press these two acetates together, they're actually sticking together now because there's just a film of water between the two. So now if I hold the parietal pleural membrane, and I'll just show you I'm not cheating. That's the parietal pleural membrane there. It's now fixed onto the visceral pleural membrane. Now if the chest wall moves up and out, I think you can see that because the two membranes are stuck together, the visceral pleural membrane will move with the parietal pleural membrane. And of course the parietal pleural membrane is fixed to the chest wall. So that's going to move with the expansions of the chest wall. The parietal pleural membrane also goes over the surface of the diaphragm. And that means the lung, which is attached to the visceral pleural membrane below, is going to expand with the chest wall. So this hand is now the chest wall, my left hand is now the lung, and I think you can see that as the chest wall moves, it's going to bring the lung with it. Because these two membranes are stuck together. Now, of course, if there's a pneumothorax and air gets between the two, then there's nothing holding the lungs together, nothing holding the parietal and visceral pleural membrane together, and the lungs can simply collapse. And you'll get a collapsed lung situation until you come and intervene to get the air out. So in the physiological situation, there's actually a negative pressure there of about four millimetres of mercury between the two membranes, and they move together.